Y'all know what it is, it's Doug Funny, Nerd Bars, NBN, here on the Pavement Season 3 with my boy Ron Murray, y'all. I got them with me, Nerd Bars, Big Quail. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Doug Funny, Nerd Bars, NBN, here, rocking with my boy, Ron Murray, man. I appreciate you having me here. I appreciate <laughs> you, Doug. Salute to you. Doug Funny, Qu Big Quail in the building. <laughs> First off, that? let's go, man. Who is Doug Funny? Uh, battle rapper, nerdcore artist, uh... Comedian, I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm just out here, man. I do what I can. Video game designer, I'm out here trying to do that shit now. So, stay out here. How and why the name Doug Funny? Uh, it, it goes far back. I okay. was I was like self-producing for a long time uh, before I started rapping. And uh, I kept showing it to my homeboys. And he was like, man, you like Doug Funny. And I'm like, what you mean? He was like, because you bring me sweet beats. I'm like, oh, I like that. <laughs> so I'm going to keep with that. Okay. So what came first for you, battling or making music? Music, Okay, for sure. so talk about you making music, some of your influences around that time. So uh, I started making music in like middle school. I used Fruity Loops, like a crack version oh, of Fruity, Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops. Yeah, Shout man. out to Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops. And I did a lot of sampling, a lot of video game sampling. And I, you know, I play video games and I'll be beatboxing to them. And I'm like, yo, that's, that shit sound hard. And I'll just make it and I'll just rap over them. So it became real easy rolling on Fruity Loops and using MIDI Loops just on top of it. And then started making that, pushed that around high school, middle school, and kept moving. So with this, when you started rapping, were you just rapping or did you know that you wanted to do what is nerdcore? And I definitely want you to ask, answer that question, but what is nerdcore as well? Uh, nerdcore is like... Uh, it's it's hip hop based around nerd culture, right? It's about video games, comic books, movies, you know, shit like that. Uh, for instance, I wrote a whole mixtape based around Metal Gear Solid, the video game. Mm, okay. And you know, I enjoy that, but that's that's pretty much what that is. I honestly didn't know I was doing nerdcore until I saw like the documentary Nerdcore Rising that's on uh, Netflix. Oh, that's a real thing. Hold yeah. on. Okay, go ahead. Keep yeah, going. and uh, that's that's my homeboy um, that follows. It follows uh, MC Front a lot, and that's that's my guy. I reached out to him after I saw the documentary, and he put me on. So I started, you know, understanding the culture and the environment of, of nerdcore from there. So who are some of your rap inspirations, you know, going into this? Because, of course, it is nerdcore rap, but what were you listening at that time to get your rapping, Doug Funny's rapping, and even producing as well, because you do that as well? Uh, I mean, for producers, um, Just Blaze. I love Just Blaze. Uh, Timberland the King, Pharrell. A lot of East Coast uh, beats, a lot of boom baps I listened to before we changed to a lot of, you know, hi-hat hell for these beats, man. Um... Um, but for rapping, I love I love punchline rappers. I put I put Fabulous up there. Shout to Fab. I love Fab. Um, shit, J. I love J. M. I don't know. Eminem is a very an emotional rapper than he is a punch rapper. I feel. Um, but I still put him up there. But yeah, it's it's a little list, a few. You know what I mean? So explain the scene for nerdcore rap because. Rap really in itself, it's not niche anymore. It's definitely mainstream. Right. But just like battle rap is niche, nerdcore is niche. So right. describe what that scene is, nerdcore. Nerdcore. Nerdcore scene is like a lot of conventions, like anime conventions, um, a lot of, you know, chiptune music. Like, chiptune is like um, video game music, like the little beeps, the 8 bit sounds. They're full bands. Like Mega Man, that. stuff like that. Exactly, okay. yeah. So there's cover bands for that too. So we kind of run with those guys a lot of the time. So it's a lot of anything video game based or like music or no, just just nerd in general. Like you can catch us at an anime convention spitting anime raps. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of the times is where I got most of my money in a nerdcore run. 
Oh, okay. We're going to get to that. Get to that. <laughs> so how was the Nerdcore scene? Because I've seen one of your interviews talking about getting venues for that. Was it still very unseen and unheard of at one point in time? Yeah. Or was it easy to get venues because it's Nerdcore, but it's not necessarily gangster rap? Right. It. You, you brought up a very good point. Because a lot of the times when we try to book for venues, no one knew what Nerdcore was. So we'd have to explain it to them. But because we put rap to them, they didn't want to book the venue because a lot of hardcore gangster rap comes to these venues and issues happen a lot of the times. But when you put the soft nerdcore on top of it, they're like, oh, give it a chance. And then a lot of the times when we put a bigger name on top of the list, like one time we had MC Chris from Adult Swim come into town. So we slapped that Adult Swim thing on it and they were like yeah we're all down to soften it a bit right yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like convincing the venues that it's not a hardcore rap it's nerdcore rap you see what i'm saying it's that weird flip of it but it was it was difficult but we we managed to it still to this day a lot of people don't even know what nerdcore is no nah, but you're definitely holding the flag up for that but let's get away from the dfw because you're definitely international dub your first <laughs> bar breakdown yeah scratch one off the bucket list make it two crossing the ocean not sure what i'm getting into seeing scenic was believing when i'm passing through feeling larger than life standing right next to the gundam statue Doug funny <laughs> international dub we're not talking about the dfw <laughs> We're talking about a whole nother country. Yeah. Japan, Tokyo, Germany. Talk about that. And that song was Tokyo Hands yes. featuring Mega Ran and Mr. Miranda. Talk yes. about that, Doug. Uh, International Doug. Let's go. <laughs> Tokyo was fire. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Um, Y'all shot a video over there. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I, we shot the video in uh, the Sega arcade, which is four stories of video games. It, that uh, that arcade looked humongous. It was it was large. <laughs> it was large. It had Tekken Seven before Tekken Seven was available in the U.S. for like two years. It was fire, but. It was it was also strange because I was the biggest motherfucker in the country. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was a big motherfucker in the country, but like they were still respectful. They would they would stare, but they would look away, be like, "All right, we don't really see that." And I, there was a little kid that caught me. And they, they said something. And they were like, "Big guy." And that's all they were saying. They're like, just never seen a big guy. I hear when, especially black folks go over to those countries, they want to take a lot of pictures of you. They want to touch you. Is, is that still relevant around the time when you went there? Nah, nah. Okay. No one took pictures. No, no shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Okay. So like I said, on that song, Tokyo Hands, Mega Ran. Yeah. Big nerdcore rapper as well. Big guy. Your friend. Talk about that relationship. So, yeah. Um, around the time I reached out to MC Front a lot, um... Hang on, Mega Ran was still moving around and he was coming to town, so I, I jumped on the show with him. And he saw what I did. He saw uh, one specific joint that I did, Big Kid, where I sampled, I'm a big kid now. Mm, okay. I sampled that, made it a hit, and then we flipped it, remixed it, and then, you know, we got on from there. He saw that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at what I do. And we toured like three, four times in the U.S. We did uh, Japan. It was just like two, two or three shows in Japan itself. But it was still fire. Like, How were those crowds out there? The crowds, the first crowd was like a small bar. So it was still packed, but it, it was like, you know, very close. But it was, it was a real nerdcore scene across the water. Right, yeah, yeah. But the second venue was like a, a international convention for like nerd music and that was packed they knew all the songs they were jumping up and down it was nuts it looked like a raven there but i think we have footage somewhere floating on the internet internet but i'm not i'm not 100 <laughs> percent make sure hey there's gonna be another nerd core netflix documentary so <laughs> off the top of your head and i know um you know you're on camera you're on the pavement mm. what would you say are some of the best video game soundtracks or your favorite video game soundtracks Video game soundtracks. Uh, Mega Man has to be in there, right? Mega Man X was was the first that came to mind for sure. Mega Man X, no no question. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs the World. That's my workout soundtrack. I work out to that. Um, Street Fighter. Oh, you yes. can't go wrong with Street Fighter. Guy stays, still hits. Still slaps. Still slaps. Um, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like Turtles in Time. That's still <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> still fun. Um, but yeah, that's. 
that's kind of it. Oh, I will say, just honorable mention, uh, MB, I know, NBA Street Volume 2, where Just Blaze does Ooh. all the beats. That shit was fire. Bring back <laughs> That shit was fire. Bring back NBA Street. <laughs> so, moving on, transitioning into battle rap, what made you make the decision to battle rap, and how was your first meeting with Oso? Okay, yeah. Um, so, there was a part in time where Nerdcore it felt like it was stagnant like i felt like we hit a brick wall like we're just repeating the same thing and that's how i feel not to out no one on nerdcore obviously but i felt i hit a wall so i was like all right how do i get better because i need to know i need to know that i can rap <laughs> and i want to sharpen my sword how do i do that and you know i'm still watching url battles i'm like yo is there any like local battle leagues so I found DFW Battle League, and I was like, all right, well, it's cool, I guess. And then I found Live from the Block, which was a lot more professional. And then one of the videos that they had showed a preface video of Kundalini's uh, memorial. And during the time I was doing open mics in the DFW, he, he put me on. R.I.P. Kundalini. R.I.P. And he put me on. So him just popping up in the video was like, I need to fuck with the block. <laughs> I need to fuck with the block. So um, I saw Cliff Watkins. Shout out Big Cliff. Big Cliff. And in a lot of the videos for the battles for Live from the Block, I was like, let me reach out to Cliff and see if I know who, who I need to speak to about getting in there. And he reached out to Oso. Oso was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get you played. Just give me a few weeks. And gave me tea. <laughs> so what battlers were you watching? Or did you just go into it like, Hey, I'm gonna write my bars, or what was the process getting ready for your first battle rap? Uh, I, I I really didn't have a process, man. I was okay. just I was just writing because honestly, when I write bars for music, it was punchline bars already. So I just had to write it towards a person. <laughs> yeah. So I felt like all I'm doing is just sharpening my sword towards a person, and I didn't feel like that was too hard to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So the first battle, how do you think it went for you looking back in retrospect? Because you're used to big crowds, and i got to make sure to throw this out there. A lot of people's worried about Texas toast, but you're international and overseas, the bread is different. <laughs> so you go into the battle rap crowd, was it? Was there anything you had to work through with that, or to, to, was it the same for you? Uh, no, it's not the same at all. Because like when you're performing, you have a beat to save you. Right, you can yeah. mumble, yeah. Blah, 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 and no one's gonna hear it. No one cares. <laughs> but in battle rap, if you stumble, oh, oh no, this round's trash. <laughs> this is a whole round. All right, you lost. You lost. It's over. And and I was nervous for that because I knew that was gonna be the problem. That if I stumbled a word, I was gonna look bad, and I have to go back. What did I say? Think about that. And then on top of that, you're on these kind of spotlights, and a crowd of people just like. Say something fire. All eyes. Yes. <laughs> Say some fire, and it's like, damn, what's the bar that is fire? <laughs> um, so it was very like anxious, and people saw that. Like you rapping too fast. Yeah, it's my anxiety. <laughs> Sorry, um, but it was it was definitely an eye opening experience to know that no one's gonna save you on that stage <laughs> at okay. all. Shout out to T. Lafayette, you know, yeah, for going sure. resume a little bit. You know, for shout sure. out to Remini, shout out to Ace, shout out to Chronic, A. Wax, Green Eyes. You were part of the first block 2v2, and also you had an eye battle. And, you know, we, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. So what were some of your favorite battles on the block so far? Favorite battles on the block? Chris Jiggs versus Squares. Oh, shout out to 3G Stones, too. You, you want some oh, money yeah. on that yeah. one. I'm <laughs> that too. You undefeated uh, when, when that bread's up, but we'll get to that. Oh, what yeah. Some your favorite battles? For sure. Uh, yeah, Squares. Uh, Squints versus 3Gs. No, your battles. My battles. Yeah, okay, like my you, bad. You enjoyed uh, the back and forth. 3Gs. I like that. I love that battle. I knew he was going to come in with some very interesting... 3Gs underrated. I, He's I underrated. He says right. some funny shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, shit, who else did I battle? I thought your Green Eyes battle was, was an entertaining one. Yeah, I had to show out for that. Yeah. Like, I had to show up for that. Doug Funny don't play about his money. No, not at all. I don't... Mm -mm. <laughs> nah, not at all. And I thought the Chronic battle, I thought that was a good one as well for you. Chron oh, yeah, yeah. Did you I, feel that you had something to prove with that one? Honestly, I did. Because Chronic is a is a is an awesome writer. Yes. Dude can write. And 
I think that I had a chance because his last showing, it was kind of mixed review. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, one rounder, let me put the best I could put forward. And I was medicated because I was not feeling well. So I was out of my feelings. Let me get this shit done. So it was a different Doug then. Yeah. So I felt like I took that. Chronic felt like he took that. 1v1s or one rounders are tough to decide. Let's get to your next bar breakdown, Doug Funny. Oh shit. <laughs> the block got me losing. See, that's not the first time I heard that. <laughs> this time when I'm clapping over the body, I ain't trying to bring Tinkerbell back. But here are the facts. Your best bars are nerd bars, but against me it's a damn shame. Because nerd bars, Doug Funny is the best in the game. Versus Chronic, bar breakdown, two questions from that. Mm. Number one, are, do you get enough respect on the block, Doug Funny? Because I feel you don't. And number two, how do you feel about so many street rappers now using anime bars? Because it wasn't always like this at one point. Yeah, we definitely talked about that. The first question, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Do you get your respect on the block, Doug Funny? I told you uh, before, I'm, they be playing with your name, Doug. <laughs> uh, honestly, um, from the bigger ups, yeah. Like okay. Trebo, Shout and, Trebo. Trebo Billy. and them, uh, Oso gives me respect, but for a lot of the times, no. A lot of the times, no. It's like, you, you rap nerdcore, but you use nerd raps in your rap. Like, what you talking about? <laughs> you can't, no one can't say no one can spit around and not have some kind of nerd rap in it. Even Red reached out to me, or Red said Shot like Red, some bar, word. some bar for me, and he was like, "Did you get that bar?" I was like, "I don't, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry." <laughs> and he walked off. I was like, "All right, man, you can't, you can't say that nerd bars is shit when you when niggas is out here doing nerd bars." And that goes to your second question. I don't know where when this started, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, Dragon Ball Z was like, all right, it was acceptable. And then we opened the gate to everything else. And now everything's acceptable. Even some, like, anime shit that still get dropped, I didn't get. Because I don't watch all anime. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for that, bro. It's a lot of anime out there. But I, I don't know, man. It's a mixed feeling. It's good to see, like... Like people are opening their minds that everything is fire. We were all kids at one point. We all, you know, identify with some kind of nerd shit. Mm -hmm. And I, it felt it felt weird to be like, I'm gangster. I don't watch cartoons. Like you, you, you have kids. You have to watch <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> Come on. So it's it's mixed for me. Like I'm glad that people are are being more open minded with bars. And that's what it is at the end of the day. It's bars. And I want to hear some crazy shit. To me, it kind of reminds me of the Closet fans. Because I remember at one point, you know, I, I was a kid that had the Marvel trading cards. And, oh, and I still have people, those. And a lot of people <laughs> wasn't fooling with those. But now, Marvel runs the world. Mm -hmm. And I know there are people I went to school with like, you wasn't fooling with this. But they're Marvel fans. Now, Marvel anime, fans, I'm, I'm not big on anime. But I know there was an anime scene in... Those guys that used to dress a certain way or be whatever, you know, it wasn't looked upon highly. But now, everybody, they're anime fans. So, to your point, I'm happy that it's more accepted. Because I think, to my point, the most anime I've seen is um, the Death Notebook one. I've mm -hmm. seen that one. Um, the JoJo's Bazaar, that one's hilarious. I don't know if it's supposed <laughs> to be as funny as I think it's funny. It's supposed funny. to be funny, Okay, because yeah. it's, it's hilarious. Be funny. And then there's this other one on Netflix. It's with the animals in high school. I don't know if it's a good or bad anime. It's called Beastars or something, but it's compelling. It's, huh. it's, it's Yeah, it's crazy. I've heard that one. So, yeah, I need to watch it then. It's, it's wild. <laughs> like, I watch it. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's crazy. But with that, Doug Funny's anime Mount Rushmore. Anime Mount Rushmore. Um, top four. Top four. Uh, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. Okay, which one is that one? Fist of the North Star. You you did that track. Shout out to you. We're going to get to that too. <laughs> Fist of the North Star. Yeah. For sure. So, the story is... All right, did you want to... Yes, because I, I, okay. you may not know about the anime like that. All right, Plus, you so, nerd bars, you're that. I can only think of one other person that gets busy with nerd bars like that. Shout out to Street Hymns. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? But yeah, talk about your animes, your Mount Rushmore anime. Uh, Kenshiro, for sure. He's basically Bruce Lee, who's untouchable. Anyone who touches him dies immediately. It's one of those... It's kind of like when you were playing tag when you was a kid mm -hmm. and then when someone tags you you made up some bullshit and then you, it couldn't get tagged no more mm. it's that anime okay. like you touch me oh no but i've got this bullshit and then you die and his head explodes okay. <laughs> next one uh 
DBZ, like you can't. Okay, shout out Dragon Ball Z. I, I put Gohan in there. I can't go. I can't put Goku up there. <laughs> okay. Gohan is way stronger in there. If if not, Vegeta. Frieza ain't stronger than both of them. Frieza? I I guess. Nah. Nah. Who's the Who's the the shorter guy that's always angry? Uh, Vegeta. Yeah, him. Is he Vegeta. stronger than Goku? Uh, if he's mad, if he's pissed off, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. But I think Gohan hasn't been angry enough to even touch their level and he's i think he's stronger like low-key stronger than all of them okay dbz number two number three uh damn put me on the spot for number three what uh, about uh the one piece i hear that's one of the big animes which is that on the anime mount rushmore i i haven't watched it to say but i will i will put ang and avatar in there because that's technically anime it's korean anime okay <laughs> we, we going to avatar number three so number four Doug Funny's anime Mount Rushmore. Uh, I'm gonna have to put because I'm I'm watching it. I'm watching this now, and this is uh, um, Demon Slayer. The, okay, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. I've Slayer. heard of that one. Couldn't yeah, I'm tell you what it's now. about, but I've heard it. I, I hear it's about <laughs> anime streets. I, I like hands. Anyone that got hands, I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, the creating process, battling versus making music. You talk about it, it was pretty easy for you as far as the process mm -hmm. in regards to, you know, being a punchline rapper, you're able to do that. You just had to be able to direct it at someone when you're in the battle realm. But as far as your fans, because you do have fans that are fans of your nerdcore music. Yeah. Do they translate to being battle rap fans as well or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, I will say when I had uh, when I was in nerdcore, I had a lot of uh, like feminist fans, mm -hmm. and you know I respect you know all my fans. However you feel, whatever you know what I'm saying. But when I battled T, they were like, "Oh, you're a misogynist." <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" Not understanding what battle rap really is. <laughs> right, like, right. I was like, "Damn!" All right. Well, however you feel, like I can't. I'm not going to tell you not to listen to my music. However, T is also a grown woman mm -hmm. and knows to battle. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, it, it doesn't translate very well, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Uh, it, the creative, the writing process is completely different, right? With the beat, you have a tempo, right? Yeah. You have a beat. Whereas battle rap, you can make your beat however you want, you know what I mean? Correct, yeah, good point, yeah, that's a great point. So, and and that's, and that's where it's different, right? Like, whereas you're writing on a track, you're just following the beat, and then whereas on a battle rap stage, you're writing a, a script for yourself. You're not just writing bars, you're writing, what am I doing here, where's my hands, how am I gonna project myself, what are we doing that? If you're not performing this shit, you're losing. <laughs> So why do you feel there's such a excuse me, why do you feel there's such a stigma with battle rappers and making music? And I'm saying this to your face, I would say it online. I feel for what you do with your nerdcore music, you spit lava. It's great. I love it. I, I think it's a hey, the garage sale mixtape. Y'all go check that out. Oh, thanks, you know, Shaq <laughs> Fu, you know, North Star. We're gonna we're gonna get into the the op part of it because we both have the same op. <laughs> but with that, why do you feel that there's such a stigma with battle rappers and making music? Um, I think it, it goes far back to like the smack URL days, like because like think, when you think about Iron Solomon and those guys, like you were like, yeah, these, these guys can rap, but then you listen to their album, they're like, mm, right, mm. it sounds like battle <laughs> rapping over a beat, over a beat, yeah. and and it doesn't translate well, and I think that's the stigma that started from there, that everyone pushes that narrative because that's how it was, not so much as it is because like rap like url battle rappers like briz rothstein or dre the hitman they got mixtapes that's fire shout out dre the hitman <laughs> dude's yes. freight got tracks shout out dude's <laughs> yes. yeah track of, Stay dude's got tracks. shout out dude's <laughs> dude's got tracks so like at this day and age you have to be multifaceted and it's and it's hard to have it's hard for fans to know that when it's so much shit happening at once mm -hmm. it's it's a technical or tech age where everything is available now not later now <laughs> so you have music you've been able to perform at some of the highest levels yeah. internationally so bigger politics dealing with the music industry or battle rap politics what which do i prefer no which is which 
has the more issues, battle rap politics or music industry? Which one's worse? Ooh. Um. I would say battle rap. Okay. Honestly. Talk about it. Because, like, with music, once you go independent, you don't have to answer to nobody. But then when you go into booking or booking leagues, um, like, they have their own way of doing things. And that's fine. And then you also get into, like, territory or, you know, you know, uh, he shouldn't be rapping over here because he's he's representing this league mm -hmm. and that league and it's like dude just want to rap <laughs> let yes. them rap yes so and i feel like that's that's where it gets like weird and then personal whereas like music industry it's straight business here's the contract here's what you need here's what you have to do and maybe i'm not that far into battle rap but i haven't seen like contracts that's like here's your stuff here's what we expect of you and fly out that kind of thing and i think you hit on it because when i found out about battle rap in the dfw and wanting to see more battlers from each side you know talking about live from the block and dfwbl hmm. no one really had a reason for why one side doesn't want to battle the other side besides them just being on that side right so it turned into a real awkward situation for me to where i'm thinking like okay we could have a real great thriving battle scene in the dfw but people are getting in their own way purposely though you know because i believe a lot of these conversations is just men having conversations versus well i don't want to go talk to them and i don't know what they want to do but hey right. that's, that's a whole nother episode right right day. right so you're on the first block 2v2 big shout out to gi <laughs> joe y'all were a whole cheat code out there y'all yeah. beat up on syntax and tim peyote shout out to the ivy league they did their thing but how did For that sure. come about and how was that 2v2 process uh the 2v2 process was fun we had to set up like a google drive okay <laughs> <laughs> and it was like all right here's four bars i was thinking about today what you think it's trash let's all right all right fine <laughs> let's, let's who, go back who, to baby who shut down more bars you or gi joe i did oh. <laughs> <laughs> i did i'm gonna be honest i'm like what are we talking about here <laughs> but that's joe style right he'll 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 go around the bar and then when he lands the bar you're like oh that's what you were yeah, talking about punch, yeah <laughs> Uh, but me, it's like two far bar setups. And if it's not, if I don't get to the point, I moved on. <laughs> and, you know, that's where I learned from Joe about pacing. And that was, that's what helped me push along for the battles afterwards. So I, I honestly feel like Joe helped me learn to slow down with, like, the bars itself and just trying to make the pacing right and engage more in the audience other than just rap bars man shout out to gi joe and of course with that you had an eye battle opportunity big shout out to syntax big shout out to lex luthor you battled taj out there in downtown dallas how did the eye battle opportunity come about um it was a uh, syntax syntax uh doing a lot of noise with uh eye battle and then i battle wanted to do a uh dallas uh chapter for mm -hmm. like the uh studio series and you know it was dope for sure um the the event was dope uh everyone got their shit off i feel like um the anxiety got the best of me i don't think taj beat me i think i lost to myself i agree with that <laughs> not knocking taj but i i don't think he had the greatest performance but to me it's like i think it was one of those things where I agree. I agree with what your point. Right. I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Like rewatching the footage while it was live. Like, yeah, my material. I, I was smoking him, but like I stumbled because I was like more in paying attention to the audience than I was with the bars and the guy in front of me. I, I don't know where my head went near the end, mm -hmm. but <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's what happened. There. But it was an amazing opportunity, man. I would, I would definitely do it again. Uh, I battle was definitely fun for sure just being able to rap outside of the block was was fun just seeing someone i've never seen before and how to do the research is the fun part for me mm, okay all right real quick going back to the music if you haven't checked out doug funny's music it's great nerdcore classics and one of the things i would tell you to go check out the garage sale mixtape 
Shaq Fu, that's one of my jams. Yeah, I love that one. The North Stars, the jam. Yeah. And you know, when I see somebody and me and that person have the same ops, you know, we almost become friends. We almost <laughs> become family. F GameStop. Facts. I sure. got big beef with GameStop. It's smoke. <laughs> I haven't shopped there in years. Right. The associates, they usually be jerks, but it's not necessarily one of the best companies to work for at the same time. No. Talk about the inspiration and what happened to you, Doug Funny, for the F GameStop. Jam. Uh, yeah, as you know, man, I don't like playing with my money, and and GameStop Talk. likes to play with my money. All the time. <laughs> oh, they love to play with my money, and like I'm I'm a nerd, and I'll I'll buy these collector's edition. Like it was one specific uh, instance where I was trying to buy the Doom helmet from Doom for a oh, collector's edition. I remember edition. that one. Yeah. I I wanted that so fucking bad, and for some reason GameStop canceled it. And then so you I, had a reserve. I had a reserve. I had a reserve, and they canceled it. And I called, and they were like, "Oh, for some reason, the card won't go through, so we had to cancel it." Um, you couldn't just call me. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't just let me know, email something. And this is not the first time. I I had to go back to them again for a Metal Gear Solid Collector's Edition. Mm -hmm. It was like a hand. Did the same shit in order in order for me to get or reorder it i had to go into a gamestop buy a gift card with the same amount and give them give the card to them over the phone the hustle never stopped and i was like what the fuck what system is this so like it seems with gamestop and i don't know i could be 100 percent wrong is that the frontline stores have no idea what the corporate office is doing i can believe that and it's like when you make an online order the store don't know what the fuck is going on and the stores got to call them and then it's like why are y'all business, bro? Yeah. <laughs> y'all don't know what y'all's doing. So that that was the inspirations. And I had to look up research to... I had a battle rap research to fucking GameStop business. Hey, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> you, you were calling out CEOs. I was calling Everybody out Everybody was getting the smoke. And yeah, definitely rest in peace to tips and tricks. I, I let you know my GameStop story. One dude, he signed me up for the Game Informer. I... I I ain't no tough guy. I don't try to be no goon, but I, I thought I was going to have to see him at that store because I did not want Game Informer okay, Magazine. Forward. But we're going to move on. Battle groups. Mm. Are you part of a battle crew? Because I, I did watch a few of the battles. I watched a lot of the battles. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. You know, Dos, Dojo, do they help craft any of the Doug Funny experience? or? Uh, I mean, they definitely uh, have me over to the Dojo to kind of like... But y'all don't write for each other at the dojo. No, right? no, I definitely have. Shout out the fellow. I definitely have like some bars, and I'm like, yo, what do you think? Does this make sense? Because a lot of the times, like, I think too deep in some bars, and people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I go to the dojo just to do that. But like, yo, does that does that make sense? This that yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh huh. It doesn't hit as you wanted it to, but I would work on it. Mm -hmm. Great, great. That's exactly what I need. And a lot of the times I feel like battle rappers need that. They need that, you know, that ear to rap to, to, to tell them, I don't know if that's going to work or not, bro. Like, and that's the only way to grow just for, you know, an artist standpoint, for someone that knows what they're doing to stop and be like, hey, I don't think that's the move. Try doing this. It, it's kind of like, you know, martial arts, bro. If you have a wrong footing, you're not going to punch the way you want to. So you have to go to the dojo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I did there. But with that, have battle rap crews approached you? And would you join a battle rap crew? Uh, battle rap crew has not approached me. Um, I don't think I would. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've tried doing crews and stuff like that. And it don't, it don't work out as intended. And it's just like... Everybody can't be the dungeon. Everybody can't be 500. Everybody can't be Ivy League. Right, yeah. And and a lot of the times, not not every member is present at every event. Mm. Which is... I don't know. If we're, if we're mobbing, we ain't mobbing, though. <laughs> no, talk about it. Talk about it. And that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. People can feel differently about it. And that's the main reason why I feel like joining a group... It's unnecessary and it is unnecessary so let's get to my next question the op list and I'm gonna tell you this to your face I will tell you it online I feel your best battles are when that money's up yeah when big quail comes out 
We saw versus Green Eyes. Mm -hmm. We saw versus 3G Stones. I feel that's when we get the best Doug Funny. For sure, yeah. So who <laughs> is sure. your op list? Who needs to see Doug Funny or who do you want to see? On the block, off the block, wherever. Uh, I, I don't know, bro. Um, I, I thought about this when, when, you, when you hit me about it. I'm like, I don't really have an op list currently because I'm not sure who's on the block. I, I look at the culture roster and I'm Shout like, out to the culture. Shout out to Trayvon. And I'm like, I don't I don't know here either. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I'll be open to the opportunity if it presents itself, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. To be completely honest with you. I think, you know, as far as you goes, there's plenty of great battle opportunities that could be there. Because I look at it like, you know, you versus Dre the Hitman. I think that could definitely be a very interesting battle. I think you versus someone like Zoe, I think that could be a very interesting battle. Yeah. Like I said, in the next time Doug Funny gets battled, it needs to be money on the wood. That's how I feel. Money needs to be down, and then Big Quail can come out. That, <laughs> can we agree on that possibly in the future? Yeah, yeah, I can agree on that. If there's money on the wood, or money up on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get out of here, what's some advice that you would give battle rappers? Uh, stepping into this, um, be confident in the material. Okay, for talk sure, about it. easily. Um, if you walk in there like, do you like this? No one's gonna like this mm. shit. <laughs> yeah. If you're like, this is fire, they're like, yeah, it's kind of fire. That's yeah. true. You got to exude on stage. You gotta right? exude. Like, so that's that's number one. Uh, number two, know what you're talking about. Uh, research it, cause like, if you're wrong, people don't follow the bar as as heavily, and. I don't know. I, that goes with the third part would go with confidence is really pacing yourself because if you're already confident you already know how to pace yourself mm -hmm. and that's that's two thirds of the battle rap is your confidence in your writing ability live sure. from the block the pavement season three big shout out to Doug Funny Big Quail Nerd Bars Man, let them know where to find your stuff and get us out of here, man. Uh, you can find all my stuff on Spotify, iTunes, um, as Doug Funny. Um, if you Google search Doug Funny Nerdcore, it will pull up all the videos, the music, the band camp. Um, it's, it's scattered all through the internet. I am horrible with marketing, and that's, <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just find me, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I'm available, whatever. Live from the Block Pavement Season 3. Appreciate you, Doug. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks again. Block shit.